Shiloh family and to all of those who tune into our normal broadcast. This is a day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. What a powerful scripture and we all know that it will wake up our day. But I need to tell you that as uh, before we go into our service as normal, I think as a pastor I need to give a response to everyone. I think as a church we need to give a response concerning what's going on in our nation. Over 1,700 people from 22 different cities were arrested this weekend, all in a protest over the killing of George Floyd. Uh, in Minneapolis, this Minneapolis police officer, Mr. Chauvin, has been arrested. And in the estimation of some attorneys, has been charged with what's a very small charge concerning to the type of crime that was given. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 3, Jesus was talking to a group of Pharisees and scribes and talking to his disciples. And he made the statement that you can look at the sky and see that the storm's coming, uh, but you can't discern the times of the times we're living in or the signs of the times. The signs of our times. I was at a protest yesterday in Millville. For the most part, it was peaceful. Uh, we spoke very diligently. The chief of police was there. Officials were there. And we were just trying to make sure that there was a visible voice. I want to thank the young man who put that together and invited me to do the prayer. Then I thought the church needs to make sure that we understand that our history can't go dormant. That it has been the church that has always been at the forefront of fighting social justice. We're sitting around now. In 2013, we have Trayvon Martin. 2014, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, uh, Ferguson, uh, Mr. Brown. What am I telling you? Wasn't it Eric Garner in 2014 that said, I can't breathe? And now, six years later, we have another incident saying, I can't breathe. We're in the middle of a pandemic that has not only shown that it affects disproportionately people of color, Oh, but check the numbers. The numbers state that we are the ones that, disproportionate to our size, we are the ones who actually die and get the virus, get the virus more so than our counterparts. Not only that, it is that pandemic has given visible rise to an epidemic in our country. The health system is, is racist. The structural racism in our country, let me say it that way, the health crisis is just being visibly shown through this pandemic, which has shown there's an epidemic in our criminal justice system, discrimination there, and all of these things have come together for the perfect storm and created these protests. All I'm saying to you is we're living in a time that I think it was Will Smith that said, um, racism isn't going away, it's just being filmed. It's not getting greater, it's just being filmed. It was Dr. Martin Luther King who said that riots are the language of the unheard. What am I saying to you is that we as a church must man the walls. I know we're not going into our churches. We must make sure that as we have done through the years, we must make sure there's prayer. So I'm coming on this morning not to give you a commentary, although I could. Uh, I, I can remember being pulled over unfairly. I don't think there's a black man in America who has not had that fear. I can remember riding down the road, cringing as an officer who you knew visibly just followed you around. That's their job. I'm not complaining about that because I, I love the security of having police. And I think that we shouldn't go to the level of civil unrest and go to the level of where we're just having anarchy in the streets. But I think there needs to be a message. The message needs to be discerned to those in power. This overflow that is spilled out into the streets, unless there is some sort of reform, uh, where there is some sort of sensitivity in our policing, and unless uh, there, are, there are young people out there now who don't come from the generations that we come from, they are just not going to take it. It's not justified. We no way condone violence. We don't want our cities torn up. We don't want our streets torn up. We don't want our kids jailed. But there has to be some sort of reform. What is the church's role? Well, I think in the spirit of Dr. King, it's not to tear down businesses and burn cities. It is our job to put out the call for prayer. 
I'm sending out a prayer along this morning. When I was growing up, a good Baptist boy in the Baptist church, there was a song we used to sing, and it said, a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, and every dying soul to save is fitted for the sky. To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill, may all my power engage to do my master's will. Church, that's what I'm calling for. I'm going to pray this morning. You're going to go into our broadcast. My heart is heavy, but I think we need to make sure our young people in this church, I'm going to ask them to give a response, to talk about how they feel. I'm going to ask our youth pastors to really breach this, breach this question. Let's get it out there. But what I'm calling for every member of Shiloh, every member that's hearing me, let's go into prayer. Remember, prayer changes things. I know it may seem like it is a small tool, but there is power in prayer. The Bible says the prayers of the righteous avail much. And because they can't discern the times, you need prayer. Someone sent a message saying, we shall overcome. Wow, we've been singing that for a long time. I think the only overcoming we do is to make sure we let God know that we believe he alone can fix this problem. I'll probably be giving a, a different commentary now. We've got to get into the broadcast. But let me pray. Will you join me now in a word of prayer for our nation, uh, for our city, for our church members, for our young people? Let's pray now. And to the parents of George Floyd, I have children. And to all the other parents out there who have children, we need to be saved. And we're going to pray that God intervene where man cannot. Let's pray right now. Father God, I thank you that with your own sovereign power, you have allowed or you have seen what we do when we are on our own, when hearts are hurting. When, when, when not only racism, but when injustice is spilling over, you seem to come to the rescue. We're asking you to do that now, God. We're asking you right now, some way, starting with our president and those lawmakers, Lord, in Washington, D.C. and around our state capitals, that they realize you cannot put a Band-Aid on this kind of insurrection, that there must be be some changes in our laws, there must be some conversations, there must be some reform, there must be a coming together. Father God, this country has always been a great country, but there has always been structural racism, there's always been systemic racism. We're asking God right now that those walls be torn down by your power. There is a name, the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. You said where two or three of us are touching together. We don't have to be together physically, but our prayers can come together and knock down some of this injustice, some of this hurt, some of this pain. And believe me, people are hurting. God, we need you now. We need you now, Father, to come, Lord, help our parents, help our children see that destruction is not the way, that a peaceful protest can accomplish it, but also let those in power see that there will be no peace until we all come together. Father, we believe that right now it's critical, but you're a God who has all power in your hands. So Lord, as we touch and agree this morning, may every preacher, every church, somewhere along the line, give a prayer today for calm, for peace, for rebuilding, for people that are hurting to come back together. And even in the midst of this pandemic, where so many things are already happening, where we're locked down. Allow your hand to come in and guide us with the proper direction. I thank you this morning, God. Lift heavy hearts. Be the God that we know you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Enjoy our morning broadcast.